All right, Wolf Pack, we got our Hump Day Wednesday workout here. Uh, there is a lot to get in to class uh, tomorrow, so be prepared for it to be a pretty fast paced class. Probably a pretty quick warm up um, to fit in the EMOM and then the uh, age group qualifier workout. So if you know that you need additional warm ups or additional time to get the body moving, if you can show up a few minutes early so you can knock out a little extra warm up, it'd probably be helpful. <coughs> um, but other than that, we're going to do 10-minute EMOM, same um, only that we did for last week with the cleans. One power snatch plus one squat snatch. Okay, these are going to be separate reps. So you do your power snatch from the floor, drop it, reset, and then, excuse me, do your squat snatch. <clears throat> we're going to build our way to a heavy uh, complex. So we can definitely use the first four to five rounds of this to um, build and warm up. Okay, we really shouldn't be getting into our heavy weights until, you know, the fifth minute, five plus should be our heavy set, so we really want to prime all of our positioning on the um, the power snatch and catching in the squat snatch, the overhead uh, position for the first five, and then we want to obviously get our technique from the barbell, uh, the bar path from the ground into the hips, hip action, and catch and everything. So we really want to take the first half of this EMOM to make sure that everything is working and moving and grooving and we're feeling good before we get into any heavy weights. So we're not going into these heavy weights with with poor form, and everything should be should be kicking and ready to go. So. <clears throat> Um, just like with the cleans, okay, the power snatch really primes the the power of this movement, the extension, right, the uh, the bar path that we have to accomplish to make power snatch work, because you can get away with a little bit of it uh, with the squat snatch since we're dropping under it. But if we kind of fail the power snatch extension, the power, the speed, and the catch, and the bar path, um, it's not as 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 easy to do as a squat snatch in my opinion, because you have to pull the bar but farther. Pull the barbell farther, sorry. Um, so make sure that this power snatch is perfect and we're catching in a good position and then when we're replicating everything for the squat snatch, we're still focusing on the same full extension, the same bar path, the same pull of the elbows. And then once you feel everything connect and that barbell start to elevate, right? We pull under, we drop into the bottom of the, the squat and then we catch it. So hopefully you've worked in some of the overhead squats over the last few weeks and we've actually improved our overhead squat position. So now as we work in the squat snatches, right, we've improved this entire movement because our overhead squats have gotten better, okay? So that'll be fun. Um, if you don't want to do the age group qualifier, we got snatch balance plus two overhead squats. So it's actually three total overhead squats. The barbell's on the back from the rack. Okay, snatch grip. We dip drive, push the barbell off of our shoulders. And once the barbell goes up, right, we start to kind of work down underneath the bar. So this drill teaches us speed to the bottom, kind of dropping under the bar, as we snatch, right, the barbell is still moving kind of upward as your body starts to go underneath the bar. So the snatch balance is just a comfort drill to uh, work on pulling and dropping underneath the barbell, catching in a good position. So it shouldn't be super heavy weight unless we're very comfortable with this snatch balance. This is going to be the limiter. So snatch balance, stand it up, and then hit two regular overhead squats. And we're just trying to improve positioning on the overhead squat. So make sure everything we do here is perfect, full range of motion. Okay. Our chest isn't driving forward, we're, we're vertical and everything looks good. So keep a moderate weight, something comfortable we can get through, okay? Um, age group qualifier, like I said, I'd like to put a 20 minute cap on this because that's what it was, just to give people time to get through this because you're gonna be spending most of your time on the rower, okay? Should at least the way the stimulus of the workout is meant, the 50 cal row is gonna be the longest part of the workout and you got three of these. So um, 50 cal row. Handstand push up, double under. So, time frame perspective for rounds. Okay, if we're getting this done in the cap, I would say just ideally from a stimulus perspective, we should not be doing a calorie row count that takes us more than three minutes. All right. Um, I think ideally, you know, the first couple of rounds we're feeling pretty fresh. Two and a half to three minutes would be good. Um, if we're stuck on that for any longer, it's just going to eat into the intensity of these two movements. So pick a, 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 a like I said, a calorie row. It's going to be three minutes or less, especially on the first round. Um, it'll keep us moving through the workout a little more realistic, and we're not stuck sitting on the rower for four minutes. Okay, and you'll have a lot more fun that way. So, I think if you're pulling what 13. For guys, 1,300 calories is going to be about 20 per minute, which, you know, in the first round when we're fresh is is, is, is definitely an achievable pace for a lot of people. Um, so you're looking at, what, two, just over two minutes, right? Um, two and a half minutes on the row, okay? So that kind of gives you an idea where we're going to be at. The handstand push-ups, um, technical movement, but we should, uh, from a movement and stimulus perspective, be able to get through this, I would say, ideally in three sets or less, um, I, I think with the time cap being 20, it allows for three to five sets. So if this is a movement where, you know, the first set we can knock out a five and then some threes from there, I think that's going to be doable. I'm going to still be able to get through it 
in the time cap, um, but we want intensity on this movement. I know for the age group qualifiers, they're going to be doing this unbroken, or they were to do it unbroken. So we want to pick a count that we can probably get through in three sets. That way we're moving through the handstand push-ups fast. And then the double-unders, um, in a perfect world, we're doing this unbroken, or maybe two, maybe three quick sets if, the, if we biff up on these, but we shouldn't be spending, um, well, well, let's just say we should be spending the least amount of time on the jump rope. So um, choose an appropriate uh, jump rope number for you where you're not exceeding, I would say probably a minute on the jump rope. That will get us back to the rower. So, right, three minutes, minute, minute and a half, two minutes maybe, um, another minute, you're looking at five, five minutes or so. It puts you around 15 minutes for the workout. I think that's pretty realistic. Obviously, rounds could slow down as fatigue comes in, but uh, if we're going to get it in under that uh, that 18 or 20 minute cap, whatever I said it is, I think we're going to stay within those parameters. But other than that, it should be a fun little workout, good little test. Um, if you have questions, let me know. If not, have a great hump day, and we'll see you in the gym later.